Is Elon Musk the single greatest entrepreneurial mind of our generation, or is he merely a capitalist pig sucking at the teat of the state, a pig at the trough, and so forth, what have you, a corrupt crony capitalist? So, how is that for an intro? It's from intro my, resting. From, from, from okay. my formerly flaxen haired colleague. 96, episode 96 of the Scottish Liberty Podcast. Soon we will, thunk it. we will be celebrating our 100th episode. Yeah, uh, I hate sitting this close to the screen, it's weird. It makes me look cock eyed. <laughs> you always look like a cock, but yeah. this time you look cock eyed. Okay. So, you need to give us the lowdown, the DL, the down low, the lowdown on Elon Musk. Elon Musk, or Elon Musk, whatever, however you really pronounce his name, I'll just call him Elon. Um, as an entrepreneur, is he a market entrepreneur? Well, he says he is. He he has he has claimed as such. He is on record as saying that companies shouldn't receive government subsidies. More of which later. Um, no doubt, a extremely clever guy, um, born in Pretoria, South Africa, I believe. Um, and age twelve, he developed uh, with a remember basic. Oh, yeah. program, right? He developed a game program at the age of 12 years old. Was it called SpaceX? It wasn't. It, it sounds like a, a retro computer game. It was called Blaster. Blaster. And he sold it uh, to a company for $500 when he was 12 years old. Um, so he's a, he's a bit of a geek, tech buff, and uh, made a fortune. Um, he's involved... He, Made a lot of money through PayPal. He things. created PayPal. Yeah. And then he sold it. Yep. And uh, I think he still I think retains. He sold it to eBay. I think he still retains uh, major shares in it. Also, uh, CEO of a company called SpaceX, which that, is one I think the largest seeking, private space. Are they seeking to go to the Mars? To the Mars. To the Mars. To the Mars. In case you confuse it with a Mars. Anywhere else in the galaxy, <laughs> it's, it's the Mars. Mars. They considered going to the moon, but then decided it had no atmosphere, <laughs> so it's pointless. Oh, ha, dear. Ha, ha, okay. ha. So yeah, uh, CEO of SpaceX, also chief design architect, and I think obviously founder of Tesla Cars, <coughs> um, which is an electric... <coughs> Vehicle, vehicle company um, and uh, sort of stroke <coughs> luxury vehicle. I'll just wait a minute while Mr. Summer dying, <coughs> dying your own time, please. That's what no, happens no. when you broadcast live. Yeah, so uh, Tesla cars, <laughs> which are currently in a bit of, shall we say, financial trouble, in as much as he has made several projections as to sales and profits which have not materialised. And it spooked the market a little bit. I mean, if you've ever seen a Tesla car, it, they are pretty smart. They looking. look cool. They look cool as fuck. And they are also, uh, to the people I've spoken to have driven them, they say they're really good to drive. The problem I see in them is they don't look swanky enough for the price tag, mm. I don't think. And are they not like really heavy vehicles? Yeah, yeah, because there's, you know, there's a lot of batteries and so forth. However, you know, the, the guy's trying, so to speak, and he's... Uh, he's Can't blame he's, a he's, guy he's not, for trying. He's full of ideas. He's got Solar City on the go, which is uh, developing solar panels. He's trying to develop smaller, cheaper solar panels to produce more energy because he wants to reduce climate change, uh, if you believe in that sort of thing. He's also got an idea for something called the Hyperloop, which is a high-speed, super high-speed uh, underground train system it's basically like a, a tube, basically like an underground, but it's like a tube and that'll be a lot narrower. Uh, I think people recline when they go in it and it shoots along under the ground at high speed. He wants to do it, I think it's between San Francisco and what else would be on the, the west coast there? Let's see, it's Seattle. Probably isn't, but I'm sure you guys will let us know. But he's got this thing, he's, he's full of mind, he's also got something called The Boring Company, oh, <laughs> unfortunate right. name. But we can't cover that on our yeah, show because we like to limit are. it to interesting topics. In which you can imagine he's talking about doing uh, John at the Centre of the Earth thing, he's talking about building tunnels with this uh, this machine that he's going oh, to develop, so it's going to be a faster. It's a company that bores rather than being, being dull. Yeah, yeah, Accord accordingly. Um, so he's got a lot on the go. 
a lot of people have claimed that he is all style and no substance, that all this stuff is kind of ideas, drawings on bits of paper, but there's, there's, there's no real substance to it. And uh, as I say, the market's been spooked about by Tesla cars by the fact that it's not producing anywhere near what he, um, what he thought it was going to. Um, so how does this affect liberty? He claims that he is, politically, he's made the statement that he doesn't think that companies should receive subsidies. Um, however, he spent about $4 million lobbying the US government, um, both Republican and Democrat. He says, by his own admission, he is part Republican, half Republican, half Democrat. Um, and that uh, he is socially liberal and he can f fiscally conservative. You mean he hates which, the poor? Which, <laughs> which leads a lot of people, especially libertarian people, to conclude that he's actually a libertarian waiting to happen, or secretly he's a libertarian. However, there's a problem with that. It turns out that Elon Musk's companies, according to the LA Times, have received somewhere in the order of 4.9 billion, that's with a B for billion, 4.9 billion in subsidies billion. from government. That's uh, SpaceX, Tesla, and SolarCity. And especially with SolarCity, there's a solar panel factory being built in Buffalo, upstate New York. You should know about Buffalo, upstate New York. Should I? The Catskills up there, don't you people go there? Are you old? <laughs> Older people, anyway. Yeah, Buff Buffalo, upstate New York, they're building a factory up there. Uh, it's the, the government's building it. The, the, the state of New York is building it. It's going to cost $750 million, that's the, the last estimate. And they're going to lease it to Solar City for $1 a year. Wow. Does that sound a bit like corporate welfare? It sounds to you? a little bit obnoxious for uh, someone who is so eminently wealthy to be scrounging, to be coming to the government to ask them to redistribute, yeah, in hand. To redistribute um, public monies out of the taxpayer's pocket to his pet projects. Yeah. Can he not go to the public and ask for donations if they, if they believe? Can he not train up a bunch of, what's that guy that everyone likes that talks about science that used to be in a band, what's his name? Uh, is it Brian Cox? No, it's not yeah, Brian it's Cox. Cox. It's Cox, anyway. Cox, yeah. Sucks that Cox, Cox guy. <laughs> that, um, the Cox guy that everyone likes to hear lecture about science. Why can't he train people like that to go around extolling the benefits mm. of um, exploring Mars? Instead of extorting benefits. Instead of, instead of extorting the taxpayer in a shakedown. So... Yeah, Elon Musk, you're a rich dude. Stop uh, stealing. Stop looting. I mean, because he, yeah, I mean, he's uh, he's voiced support for a universal basic income. If you want to know more about the universal basic income, I believe I, know, I believe I know somebody who's got a a book coming out on that actually. Mm, okay. Uh, but with the forward written by celebrity libertarian, yet to be announced. I'm waiting. Intriguing. Yeah, in the next couple of days I will get my forward back. So. Stay tuned. Um, so he has described himself as a socialist, but, quote, not the kind that shifts resources from the most productive to the least productive, um, pretending to do good while actually causing harm, unquote, arguing instead that, quote, true socialism... Well, we know what true socialism is. True socialism, true socialism, seeks the greatest good for all, unquote. And he supports targeting an inclusive tax rate of 40%, prefers consumption taxes to income taxes, and supports the estate tax as the probability of progeny being equally excellent at capital allocation is not high, according to Elon Musk. Well, let me give you a question... Do you not find it eminently useful when people redefine terms to mean whatever they want? It I, really I, tends I, to yeah, further it helps the me a lot. Yeah, gain to clarity try does. on the discourse when you can just choose whatever definition you want yeah. for socialism or capitalism. That really helps um, promote understanding. Mm -hmm. So feminism that's another one. It's a lot of definitions depending on who you speak to, what time of day, and what time of the month. 
<laughs> yeah, even capitalism. What the yeah. hell does capitalism even mean anymore? How do you define capitalism? Um, a system based on the voluntary exchange of goods and services and private property, I guess. A system okay. of the voluntary exchange of goods and services. So, based on the evidence so far, what Michael do you Arthur think of Brissa it? says, Good morning, I always miss you on live. Not today. Well, I'm glad to have you along with us, Michael. Thank you for joining us. Who's away in Shetland? I was away in Shetland previously. Oh, right. okay. So, let me ask you a question. Well, I guess... Um, for you, Anthony, I was you can ask me two. Two. So, PayPal, that yeah. uh, seems to... I, I find PayPal very useful. I don't know if that... I mean, it seems to have a monopolistic role. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just because... It was the market leader. It's just so compatible. I don't know. If and it's simple to use. And I don't. But anyone could create a payment transfer thing that was simple to use. But it Why comes is it down such a corner in the market? Trust. People trust the brand. It's a trusted brand. I mean, it went. I seem to remember that uh, PayPal kind of grew hand in hand with eBay, and as and, and they both as one gained trust, so did the other mm -hmm. simultaneously. So they've been inextricably inextricably yeah. linked. I think eBay bought PayPal or something like or, that, or vice versa. Yeah, one yeah. or the other. And yeah, it's it seems to be the go to. What do they charge though? Are they quite expensive to these people? Very reasonable. They've got more reasonable. Why don't um, we use it? We do use it. If people want to donate to Scottish Liberty Podcast, just send some shekels to Frequency528 at Hotmail.co.uk. Preferably not shekels. Uh, you can use Bitcoin, Bitcoin gold, actual gold, uh, money. You can't send Bitcoin jizz. to PayPal. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you have to say that? No, regular... We had a conversation before this podcast started and Anthony had a, an idea for a new payment uh, method called Jizz. <laughs> it's a winner. <laughs> it's like a competing company with PayPal that's just called Jizz. So do you take Jizz? Do you accept Jizz? For those of you... Uh, for those of the Americans out there who may not, is that, is that a word in America? Is that a word in, do you say jizz? Do you say jizz? What do you say? Do you accept jizz in the US? <laughs> over, over, over a billion over outlets, a over a billion outlets worldwide. I can tell this episode's going to go viral. <laughs> it's going it's down the toilet rapidly, just like jizz. <laughs> He means so, the business jizz, not the... Um, does it matter? Does it matter? Okay. 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 Um. <laughs> we have this aside. So, if you want to donate to Scottish Liberty Podcast, because you never get this kind of comedy on any other libertarian podcast, <laughs> thankfully. Frequency not five even on Tom Woods. Frequency528 at hotmail.co.uk is the PayPal address. If you want a Bitcoin, then you'll need to get in touch with me personally to find out the address of my wallet. Do you, so, the address of the moon, the no, no, the Mars. Right. <laughs> the address of the moon, the moon, the moon at, at the solar, at the Milky Way, at the what's the name of the solar system? Is the solar system? the solar system? It's got another name. I'm sure it does. The Jizzy system, right? Okay. Uh, Fuck's sake, dude. <laughs> so I guess one of the things is. All this excitement. Just to get back on track. All this excitement about Tesla. Yeah. Uh, they don't drive very far before needing... It's not the kind of thing you can cross the country in because you can only get a couple of hours before you need to... Is it even 45 minutes before you need to... No, it must be more than that, before you need to recharge the battery. It's very... It was meant to be an environmentally friendly thing, but some people are doubting its environmental credentials. They're saying it what takes... rubber tires? Uh, I don't know. They're saying it takes huge amounts of fossil fuel energy to engineer the batteries in the first place, yeah. and then they're a pain in the ball to uh, what dispose of yeah. safely. Now, this is the case with a lot of so-called environmentally yeah. stu friendly stuff. Um, also, the electricity to charge the, the car up, where does that come from currently? It's mostly from the mains. Uh, I think... Yes, yeah, so so you so plug it's fossil fuels. Yeah, it's largely fossil fuels anyway. It might be 
less fossil fuel intensive than a regular engine but certainly the technology is not there and it reminds me of this idea like that if the government subsidizes solar panels then the technology will come on faster mm. actually this is a very big misunderstanding in economics um, M michael arthur brusa says mining lithium is very fuel intensive so and his was, son has a tesla and his son has a tesla Ooh. wow well maybe you can send a picture of your son with his tesla and we can use it as the um screenshot for this episode yeah that would be excellent so um, here's the thing, so why should, Huge. Okay. so supposing it's good technology, why should not the government subsidise it? Well the thing is, if you subsidise a product, you make something that isn't market worthy, market worthy using the subsidy, which, make, which actually reduces the incentive the company has to make that product more efficient, more uh, cost effective to bring it to market. So. Right. So, for example, the government subsidising solar panels can actually retard the progress, the progress of the technology rather than speed it up. Mm. Um, what's more, I saw this advert for Tesla was going to make these solar panel roof tiles. So everyone has roof tiling and apparently you could get tiles that were solar panels instead. And I saw this on the Facebook a few years ago oh, these are going to be available next year, and I haven't seen much about them since. I certainly don't see that they've been brought to market. Um, but, I mean, I've looked them up, and they do look cool as fuck. They look really, really awesome, the Tesla solar yeah. panel tiles. But I don't believe they're, they're available yet. So what's with this feet dragging? Um, I know that Rome wasn't built in a day, but... Um, what what are the what are the most recent fruits of Elon Musk's entrepreneurial spirit? I mean, have we seen him bring anything awesome to market without huge sums of government money since PayPal? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I know he actually he owned a McLaren supercar at one time as well. Okay. Uh, which he crashed spectacularly while he was uninsured. Um, fine, I don't know. Um, and he's previously owned a Czech-made jet trainer aircraft. So I mean, he's which was which was used in a couple of movies apparently. But I don't know. He's a strange guy. I think he's certainly bright. He has no intelligent. I think he. I think uh, he thinks he does. In his politics, he seems to be all over the map. Yeah, he's definitely. I don't think he. Does that is that there's this thing again? I'll mention it called ultra crepidarianism, which means that when somebody's an expert in one field, people as, people assume that they're automatically experts in others, and right. they may even assume that themselves. Right. Noam Chomsky is a spectacular uh, example of ultra crepidarianism. Yeah. Chomsky thinks because he's an expert in one field that he's automatically an expert in another and so does his followers. Uh, and I, I think, think Sam Harris is a bit like that, like his views on politics are very mainstream and not particularly well thought out. Yeah. Uh, not as well, he, but he speaks on things with such authority that I don't think he's highly qualified in. Mm. So... And I think, t I think um, Elon Musk... When I said he has no similar. principles, I didn't mean he was... Um, I didn't mean he's he was amoral. Okay. What I meant is he like libertarianism has a principle like the non-aggression principle, or like I guess liberal uh, like progressivism has a principle which is equality, and conservatism has a principle which is don't change things too quickly, like do it slowly and incrementally to be cautious. But uh, what well, that's what I meant when I said he no, no he didn't seem his political philosophy didn't seem to have an underlying. Principle. It seemed to be boring from a bit. Eclecticism. Yeah. So I think I mean he he likes to posture as a free marketeer and a self-made man, which he, he may be to a degree. But I think there's all sorts of problems, and it, especially when it comes to a, lo a lot of libertarians who just take somebody at face value as soon as they start making certain libertarian noises or they say a few choice phrases that makes them sound all libertarian-y. Mm. Um, 
But I think his will, Elon Musk's willingness to go to government and try and lobby government for to get, uh, I mean, that, that factory in Buffalo is a good example of just what you don't do. If your product is that good, why wouldn't you invest in it yourself? He can't be that short of money that he couldn't invest in himself. Or maybe he is, maybe it's a facade. Well, the thing is, what what is considered lots of money in the private sphere of an individual yeah. is not in the corporate sphere. So if I have 10 million pounds, I'm rich, but that's nothing for a corporation. You can barely get much done in the world stage with 10 million. So, But if, I mean, if, if even half his um, believers and his followers worldwide had to chip in, I'm sure that could be a lot sure. of money towards whatever it is, his space pro- program. And if He's, not, then it's obviously not that popular. Yeah. I mean, somewhat less serious in terms of, I mean, I think his political, some of his political views that he's, he's, he's put across uh, and his corporate welfare are more serious than this, but recently he's, he's got and himself... Involved in a hilarious controversy. Yeah. Hilarious. Let's, let's, let's touch on that. Elon that Musk phrase. tweets he'll bet you a signed dollar that Thai cave rescuer is a pedo. So can you tell me what... Um, what the story of the Thai cave rescue, please? Okay, some kids, I believe they were a soccer team of a Thai, I think they were tweens or teenagers, uh, were exploring a set of caves in Thailand. However, while they were doing it, uh, unexpectedly, the, the, the water levels rose massively, flood, uh, flood, I think it rained heavily and suddenly it flooded. Water went up uh, extremely high and suddenly they were cut off and couldn't get out of these mm. caves. Um, and they're extremely narrow at the mm. best of time. A lot of the, the, the parts where they had to go through to get to this area that they were trapped in were extremely narrow. Uh, for a grown man to get through, you have to sort of wriggle through. So it was incredibly difficult for divers or a rescue team to get through because what you have to do is you have to take, if you imagine you have to take your, your tanks off, kind of wriggle through and sort of drag your, your, your tank with you. So getting through, I think it took some, it takes something like four hours there and back. So two hours into the cave and two hours to get back. Right. And that is more oxygen than you can usually have on, on one tank. One mm-hmm. guy, uh, one ex Thai Navy SEAL who tried a rescue uh, or to try to contact these kids died in the in the process, um, and then later they managed to obviously contact them, and I believe they were all rescued after wow well, about two weeks. But it was a, it was a scary time for those kids. It was dark, completely dark in there, quite cold. They had no food. Um, they they only su- they survived by licking fresh water off the walls of the caves and things like that. Yeah, it was it was, it was pretty horrific. Nice. Um, <laughs> a really incredible story. Yeah, exactly. That is incredible. What? Somebody's somebody's going to make a, a a blockbuster movie out of it. I think. What would inspire Elon Musk to feel the necessity to block uh, to tweet something like, you know what? Don't sh- bother showing the video. We will make one of the mini. It's, it's, yeah, he, he, he said, "Sorry, pedo guy, you you really did ask for it. Like, why? Why? He said, never saw this British expat guy who lives in Thailand at the point where we were in the case. Only people in sight were Thai Navy Army guys who were great. Thai Navy SEALs escorted us in top. So th- th- this isn't the relevant tweet, but he did no. say. Well, he was. He Ellen, said, Ellen Musk bet won. you, bet you a dollar that this guy is a pedophile. Okay, but I mean, Why I know that he say that Musk was was uh, in the process of getting a sub built, a tiny miniature right. sub that would take one person at a time, but it just was an, it was a non It just wouldn't. It wasn't a goer. Uh, it was completely unfeasible in the end. Why did, why did that? Like I that? don't know. Was I mean, it maybe it's been controversy. It's maybe. <sighs> As a public, it, what would make a public figure like Pedo, uh, so like like <laughs> Pedo Musk? Sorry, <laughs> what almost came out of my mouth. Like Elon Musk, think that he could get away with me with using a word like Pedo on Twitter. I think well, one there comes a point in a, the life of a is he a celebrity? Almost he is a celebrity. Yeah, where you feel untouchable. I mean, he's he's, he's popular with the kids, I suppose, um, and. 
I don't think he quite... The thing about... I don't do Twitter and Facebook, as you know, but I, I'm guessing with these things, it's it's very familiar to you. You know, it's on your phone. Or well, it, it seems... He's on, taking a, uh, a leaf out of Trump's... Yeah, I, I, I guess... I think if he had it to do again, I think he wouldn't have done it. But it's just one of those things, it's, it takes two Why seconds to that? do, and then a lifetime spent regretting. But, but he regretting. said more, he said, said first he said, uh, he said, he did it over more than one tweet. Yeah. So here's this um, article from TechCrunch says, Musk's tantrum was triggered, tantrum was triggered, and tantalizing, by an interview Unsworth gave CNN International last Friday in which he called the small submarine Musk had SpaceX engineers build a PR stunt and said Musk could stick it where it hurts. Oh, so he started it. Right. Though the, but you don't call someone a paedophile. Though the submarine was intended to help the 12 boys stranded with their soccer coach navigate flooded cave passageways, Unsworth, who helped plan the rescue operation and recruited other cave diving experts said it had absolutely no chance of working. Unworth added that Musk had no conception of what the cave passage was like. The submarine, I believe, was about five or six foot long, rigid, so it wouldn't have gone round corners or round any obstacles. It wouldn't have had... It wouldn't have... It wouldn't have made the first 50 metres into the cave from the dive start point. Um, well, when the reporter mentioned that Musk had gone into the cave, long rigid. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> when the reporter mentioned that Musk had gone into the cave on Tuesday, Unsworth said he was, quote, asked to leave very quickly, and so he should have been. Um, so I think. So I, I think the, opi the opinion of this guy is that Musk was getting involved for his own ego. And Musk was getting involved uh, for his, you know, for his, for his, as he says, a PR stunt, and that uh, he'd have been better off just staying out of it and letting the professionals get on with their job. That was the guy's opinion. Elon Musk obviously took exception to that and decided to call the the the, the guy. No, I mean, I guess that the standing joke uh, among you know the pub crowd is that. Any guys, any Western guys that are in Thailand at all are obviously pedos, um, which is patently untrue. I mean, I've got a friend of mine who's married to a Thai girl uh, and runs a B and B out there. You know, he's, he's got three kids himself. You know, the people go to Thailand for all sorts of reasons, but that's the stereotype. Is that racist to stereotype British people, expats living in Thailand as all kitty fiddlers? It probably is. You probably couldn't get away with doing it with any other group of people. I mean, it's to call even just the fact when you talk about sex tourism, just mm -hmm. as an aside here, everybody obviously thinks of Western men mm -hmm. going to places like, uh, well, Thailand's a perfect example, or the Philippines or Vietnam. Nobody seems to talk about the, the flocks of middle-aged white women who go to places like West Africa, uh, like uh, the Gambia. And uh, and pick up younger men, you know, yeah. absolutely, I mean, uh, lots. Um, why why do they go? Th why do they go there? <laughs> they go there because, um, okay, one there's this sign. Well, <laughs> do you want me to start being racist now? Okay, I'll use I'll use the stereotype. The stereotype. Just say what people, okay, what the, is alleged. The stereo the stereotype of the um, the white woman who goes to the Gambia is middle-aged, either divorced or but lonely and needs her ego boosted. Um, when she gets there, she's immediately flocked by young, often very good looking, very physically uh, strapping, you know, uh, black men who are on the lookout for a white woman. One, it's a trophy when you've got a white woman and two, there's a passport and the and they right. offer it's an out for them so right. they can get to the uh, the EU or the UK. But then they'll just find a younger woman once they get. Well, there. that's that that would be the the, the cynical viewpoint. But and anyway, I'm well, I'm not going to make a judgment one way or the other. That's the stereotype. But nobody talks about that stereotype. Everybody talks about the guys doing it in uh, in, in Thailand. So of course 
men are always in the position of power and women are always the victim. So that was a bit of an aside there. Mm. But uh, so yeah, so the, the the standing joke is all the guys that are Western guys that are in Thailand are pedos, and it's the kind of thing that you you would say probably among mates in a pub and get a laugh. But Elon Musk is a public, yeah. he's, you know, he's you not in a pub, but he's made. Yeah. Uh, um, so, further to this, Elon Musk apologised later for college, calling a British cave for involved in the Thai rescue mission a pedo on Twitter. The comments were made in a row which erupted during efforts to save 12 boys and their football coach. What, what did he, I'm sure it was a very heartfelt and uh, meaningful apology. He said in a tweet, his actions against me do not justify my actions against him. And for that, I apologise to Mr. Unsworth and to the companies I represent as a leader. The fault is mine yeah. and mine alone. But apparently so Tesla shares well, dropped 4%. All's well that Just because well. of that tweet. Yeah, well, that now, would be a good time to buy them. If it's going to be a successful company, he said the words were spoken in anger. What were you going to ask? Uh, I was going to ask, is that a, do you think that the apology was brought on uh, in sincerity? No, or I think do you it think was it was brought on because his shares dropped 4%? Can, I don't think it was either. I think he was considered, uh, he considered it necessary, for, a bit, for not for the shares, but for him to maintain his image. Michael Arthur Bruzo says, I'm interested in the self-driving aspects of the car. That's the Tesla. Now, yeah. this is very good, because I... Before I realised there was such a thing as Uber Pool, which you only get in some cities, which means that you can share an Uber for, with someone else, um, and that's a lot cheaper, I was thinking, one day when we've got self-driving cars, everyone will just get their phone and put their pick-up location and their drop-off location into a phone, and they'll have a computer program that will calculate all of those and have little mini buses that come and take people along the same route, but right. their but their route will be customized based on the most optimal way of delivering everyone from A to B and C to D. And I thought, wow, that'd be amazing! Like that would be so good for the environment. A lot of people might not buy their own car because it'll be so cheap to just share a ride with someone. You might need to put in uh, quite thick per glass or something like that to separate people from potential weirdos but I, I like the potential of the self-driving car right uh, myself I think it sounds great I mean my jury's out on the man as a whole I don't really know I mean one good thing I liked about him was that I know that with Tesla he, he lets the patents um, be used by anyone right. who's using them reasonably right. to, to get to, to further developments right. within the electric car world he, he, he allows so that he, he open like shares he would like his to discoveries. See, obviously, he's he's an innovation lover. He is an innovation lover. I, 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 will, I, will, I will give him that. Um, I, I certainly prefer him to somebody like uh, Steve Jobs, um, who I felt, you know, as Bill Burr said, just ran a geek farm, really. You know, kind of so stuck wrong, geeks yeah. and like back and just went, invent me a phone right now. I mean, I, I suppose there's a, there's a place for that. But I think my opinion is like Steve Jobs gets a lot of credit for what people under him invented he just hmm. cracked the whip and I said invent me a phone good. right now I wanted to do that 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 hmm. um, I, I don't know I have a genuine generally good impression yeah I prefer I prefer him that I prefer him to who's the oh, Facebook the, guy Steve jo oh Zuckerberg yeah I really don't like Zuckerberg yeah. he's what is it about him particularly you find he's, offensive he's, he's one of the bad Jews <laughs> We've how do you, got, how uh, do you know he's, how do you know got, he's a Jew? We've got, uh, well, I mean, with a name like Zuckerberg. Uh, we've got he made, a he just podcast called, that name. We've got a podcast called Good Jews vs. Bad Jews, if anyone didn't get the <laughs> reference. Yeah. Uh, which has actually done very well on YouTube. If we do say so uh, ourselves. If we do say so ourselves. Yeah, maybe just call yourself a Jewish sounding name to get money. Maybe. And backing. Well... He doesn't look you Jewish. You give Jews a bad name. <laughs> he doesn't look Jewish. He looks very goy. He, he looks goyish. Well, the thing is, I don't like the fact that he uses his platform to censor non-progressive news and, like, 
you know, it's this whole only one opinion is politically acceptable and gets represented in the mainstream and he's a big part of that. Yeah. And I think he also accepted public funds. And I just I just think that he's just the the wrong kind of entrepreneur. The wrong kind of you. Okay. Um on that you had, on that note you had yeah. one more story. Yeah, more, we have more. more so I mean tell us what you think. Related. What's your verdict on um, Elon Musk? Elon Please Musk. educate us yeah. about any facts we missed out that yeah. we should have. And whether you think he is a genuine article or whether he's the greatest con artist since BT P T Barnum. Was P T Barnum a con artist? Yeah. I thought so. he ran a circus or something like that. Yeah, okay. Well maybe Elon Musk running a circus. Um okay, jihadis. Jihadis. Uh the Beatles. Is Elon Musk a jihadi? <laughs> well, I haven't heard uh, any any tales of such. Allah okay. Akbar. Yeah. Uh, Alice Coffee Bar. There's um there's a couple of guys in the UK at the moment. Uh, Alexander Cote and El Shafi El Sheikh, who were allegedly part of an ISIS cell known as the Beatles because four the Fab the, Four. The Fab Four. Four the of Fab its Four. The Fag Four, more like. Oh, Christ. Let <laughs> <laughs> me just say that out loud. Four, four of them were all Brits. And for whatever reason, they've got all well, four Brits. The Beatles were four Brits, so they called them. Uh, the 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 name the press gave them were was uh, the Beatles. Now these guys are accused, uh, among other things, apart from being uh, part of ISIS, uh, they are allegedly responsible for the capture, torture, and beheading of twenty seven hostages, including American journalist James Foley. British taxi driver Alan Henning, who had been helping deliver aid to Syrians. They beheaded people on film, uh, quote, without the slightest scruple, unquote, in the words of one of their former hostages. Uh, their Middle Ages barbarism broadcast online to horrify Western viewers and titillate aspiring jihadists. I'm reading this from Spite Online, by the way. This is Brendan O'Neill writing. Uh, and summed up the extreme backwardness of the ISIS movement and its desire to mock the very foundations of Western civilization uh, and played a role in its public executions of innocence, then they deserve the highest punishment manage- manageable, imaginable, according to Brendan Daniel. Now, the thing is, they're in Britain at the moment uh, and America wants to extradite them to stand trial for the murder of its citizens. If they're found guilty in America, it looks very likely that the death penalty will be asked for and will be probably carried out. So the question for the British government is, do they uh, stand by supposedly British principles of being anti-death penalty? I don't think that's right. It's probably just the government that's anti-death penalty. I think most people, I think if you asked them in the UK, would probably be pro-death penalty, but that's my feeling. I haven't done a recent poll. Um... And so does Britain have a moral duty to stop these people from being executed? What, what are they doing in Britain? Why do we have them here? Why well, they're British we, citizens. They're, oh, they're British. When did they become British citizens? They always were. They were, they, they they were born in Britain? They, they, okay. Yeah, that's why they were called the Beatles. So why, were where, where do, were you listening to my, my well, story? I, the thought, I, I just <laughs> assumed that it was the classic story of some people coming over here, sucking off the teeth of the state and then carrying out terrorism. So what I guess I'm wondering is why are well, they have they, actually why so, did, were there crimes committed in America? No, but their the, the crimes were committed against American citizens. Some of them. Don't and we have our they, own justice system? They have been stripped of their British citizens here. How can they them. if they've been born in this country? If you committed a crime, they, they, they can't have been born here. If you commit a crime, true. you can... Sounds like it. So you gave me a row for nothing. <laughs> I gave you a life for not listening. No, I was listening. Well, they're regarded as British, okay? Right. Because that's but why they call them you, the Yeah, you, could, you couldn't be... And they were clearly them. British citizens before they went there. Okay. Right. Well, I don't know what the usual law is. If you commit a crime in another country, I don't know if you're meant to be tried in that country. But I say whatever the law is, the law is. Like, if the law should... If they're meant to be tried in America, then they should be extradited. Um, I'm not a particular supporter of the death penalty. Okay, so assuming itself, so assuming that Americans are within their rights and to, there's no legal reason to stop them from being tried in America, um, 
do does the British government have any responsibility to stop them from going there? Because I, I suppose the case that could be made by human rights lawyers is if you allow somebody to go to a country where they are going to be killed. Um, I mean, one of the cases they made against uh, deporting, was it Chowdhury? Not Chowdhury, what? Abu Hamza. Is that the to, Captain Hook? Yeah. Um, was he was going to be killed? Was it he was going to be killed well, where he was going, you know? And so Britain had some duty under international human rights law. Well, I just don't want them to cost the taxpayer here a single penny. Mm. So let me see. So let's uh, see if the American taxpayer yeah. should pay the bill. Right, so here's a question. Okay. How much does it cost uh, to put someone to death in the USA? It's a ridiculous sum of money. $740,000. Right? Dude, I'll do it for a hundred quid and <laughs> you will, some beers. You will put them to death. So, but you, the thing is, as a Christian, you don't know if you're going to go into health and eternal damnation. Yeah, but I'll repent that. after I've done it. <laughs> I think God... <laughs> right knows, after I've right done after. it. Well, I, I think God knows the ins and outs of people's hearts or something like that. Yeah, What's he the does. Quote? Well, yeah. you can see it. So, so he God, knows what I'm seriously repenting. For... for Forewarned is forearmed, and now you've told the big man <laughs> your plans. So you need to be very careful what you are willing to do for a few hundred quid. Well, my only point is, it doesn't have. Yeah, of course. To cost ninety. Yeah, but it does. Sorry, seven hundred forty thousand dollars to put someone nonsense. to death. So the, well, they put they shooting them with like gold <laughs> bullets, like. You know, I think it's all the diamond. Tip. I think it's all the appeals and things like that. So, I guess. Philosophically, I'm not in favour of the death sentence, but I think that I'm not... I, to put it this way, I wouldn't cry if they got put to death or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I think that... Assuming they're guilty, of course. Yeah. Well, I mean, I... Why I don't... I mean, the thing is, see, you put them... It doesn't... I know you can't restore the 27 per people that they killed yeah. or whatever, but their families will get nothing. The problem, the main problem with our justice system is it doesn't concern victims at all. There's no consideration for what would be good for the victim or restoring the victim in any way. So just philosophically, why would killing them better than yeah. uh, making them, putting them to work for the rest of their lives to give money to the families of the victims. Why wouldn't that be a better arrangement? Yeah. Well, we, uh, because right, see first if, of all, first of all, see if we had a first of all, yeah. How do you make a prisoner work? What are you right. prepared to what do to, to do? make him work? Well, I guess at the end of the day, you have to be able be willing to say either if you don't work, you do get the death sentence, or you get the death sentence unless you want to work. Or you say, well, if you don't, then you just get basically the minimum, which is a mattress in the corner and the bare amount of food that you need to live. You know. Sure. So, so that that's what you have to be willing to do. But you can make it. You can make it in their own self interest to work, I suppose. Which is the more valuable you become, the better conditions you'll be able to stay in. Um, and you can't guarantee they're going to do a good yeah, job. you can't, but, but maybe a bad job is better than no job. I think the thing is with the death sentence is, it, suppose someone murders someone. If we had a machine that could take their life and give it to the person that they murdered, I don't think anyone would have an objection to that. It's the fact that there's no real... Uh, yeah, you can't restore the victim. Like, if you stole £500 from someone, we could take the £500 off you and fine you and give that to the victim. But we can't, we couldn't take your life and give it to the victim. Or if you cut someone's arm off, we can't take your arm and give it to them or anything like that. So, okay. it's the fact that it seems to be retribution for retribution's sake. Um, sorry. Um, Where you lost the thread there. Someone was trying to get our attention from outside the I room. I was believed that we were booked into this room. So, okay. anyway. Well, do you know what? If you want, we could wind this up. I think that that's most of what I've got to say on the matter. Yeah, I'm okay. more interested in hearing from people at home. Okay, let's have a quick look at what the 
the general public has to say. Yeah. Any more comments? Huge pit mines in Nirvana. <laughs> no, that was Tesla. Yeah. Uh, the, the state, state should, should never, never be given, given that. Yeah, that's the okay. idea. Okay, fair enough. Um, do you, but do you disagree with the death penalty per se, or just the idea that the state shouldn't carry it? Because some people have that position. My position is, even though I disagree with the death sentence in a private law society, supposing you um, get a house in a gated community, you can sign a contract which says that if you murder, you're eligible for the death sentence. Then it's not a violation of your liberty because you've pre-agreed yeah. that your life is forfeit if you cr commit. A yeah. certain crime and that could work as a deterrent but at least it's voluntarily contracted yeah. to what I have a problem is people um, imposing that in a um, non-contracted way or submitting okay. people to a law that they didn't agree to well my guy my view on this is let these guys fry I don't think we've got any obli obligation yeah. uh, to them whatsoever it would, um, it would be better that if we would be better if they were going to get the death sentence that it could done cheaply rather than yeah. at the expense of well I am available at popular prices uh, yeah so yeah just if you're going to do, just put them to sleep yeah. Sleep. Softly with a pillow for classic <laughs> FM playing in the background. Okay, okay. we've got to run. Thank we've you very much for tuning in. Uh, more to come. We have a interview with Norman Finkelstein in the can. You can look forward to that. And it won't be long before we're celebrating our hundredth episode. We're going to try and get a special guest for that. Until next week, he hates it. I just say it because I said it in the first episode. Be libertarians. Don't be a lefty or a righty.